Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today's video is gonna be slightly different. I'm actually gonna resurface one of my old, old, old videos. So over on my main channel, when I first started my YouTube channel, I actually did this video, which was an Ikea hack. It's like an open wardrobe hack. And it was really popular. I wanna kind of bring it over to my home channel but I wanna slightly update it because I still get so many questions about the longevity of it, was it strong enough, all of that lovely stuff. So I'm gonna show you guys the project and then I'm gonna answer all your kind of like burning questions as to whether it was actually worth it. I'm gonna show you guys how I'm gonna be building my open wardrobe and it's gonna be super cheap, easy, more well, easy DIY, hopefully easy. Um, yeah, it's been kind of like, a dream for me for a while to be able to have like a walk-in wardrobe slash dressing room kind of vibe um, and that's something we were really looking for when we did decide to move house so we have a spare room which I'm kind of turning into my dressing room slash wardrobe um, yeah and originally I did speak about this in my home tour when we first moved in originally we were looking at getting one of the IKEA PAX wardrobes but to get what I wanted would have been about like 600 quid for a bit of Ikea furniture and I did not want to spend that much. So I'm going to show you guys exactly what I'm going to use, all the stuff I got and it's way cheaper. Um, yeah, I'm going to show you the room again in case anyone hasn't seen the previous video or has forgotten. It's already changed a little bit but I'll take you through anyway. So this is how it is so far. So massive window there. This is my kind of dressing table setup. So the whole vibe for this room is meant to be like white with a bit of gray and rose gold basically, but I wanna keep it really clean and simple. Um, so originally I had a really tall um, Malm chest of drawers there from Ikea and just a clothes rail. The clothes rail has now been moved out into the hallway, which is not ideal. Um, so basically, the plan is, so these, uh, this is the start of the wardrobe basically. So we want a wardrobe across this whole wall here. Um, so these drawers I got from Ikea. I got one of the six drawer malms and a three drawer malm. So I think, let me double, double check how much that was. Yeah, so the six drawer malm is 80 pounds and the three drawer mount is £40, so we spent £120 on the drawers, um, but we really, really needed it. Uh, we didn't have like any drawers at all between the two of us before. But the whole idea is basically, I'll drop a picture in anyway, but I'm going to run a rail across that whole wall with a shelf above it so that I can put all my bags, shoes, any kind of like nice stuff up there. We do have a fitted wardrobe in the bedroom as well. Um, which is the plan is that's where all of Steve's stuff's going to go and all of my stuff's going to go in here so we're all kind of crammed in that one wardrobe at the moment um but yeah I thought any sort of I don't know stuff that I don't want on show I can hide it in the other wardrobe but that kind of shelf at the top I want to put like really nice bags nice shoes and heels and stuff and kind of make it look really like I've got an amazing wardrobe so yeah, let me talk you through what I've got to do it. So obviously, chest of drawers did that. This whole wall is about 250, 250? Yes, this whole wall is about 250 centimeters. Um, so we were pretty lucky with the chest of drawers. I, I think it came then, uh, I think they came to about 240 centimeters in total. So they fit quite snug. Um, so I've got these brackets. So basically, I'm just gonna attach them to the wall and then put the shelf on top and then the rail will hang on that little hook. So I got those from Amazon and they were, let me just check how much they were. They were £5.45 per bracket and I got five of them um, and the delivery was like five pounds. They took a while to get here because I think they came from America. So if you're American, I believe they do them in like home Home Depot, Home Depot. Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure they just do them there, but our kind of hardware DIY stores here don't sell them. So that's why I had to get them online. So I got five of them, so I'm hoping that will be enough, but I'm not quite sure. 
Um, for the rail, I got this just, it's actually a curtain pole. Um, it's an extendable curtain pole. Um, I think that one's like 220 centimeters, so I'm gonna extend it out very slightly. Um, but yeah, it's just a white metal curtain pole. So that pole was super cheap. Um, I think it was only like six or eight pounds or 10 pounds. It was really cheap anyway. I'm gonna link everything down below um, so you guys can see how much it's gonna cost. I'll total it all up at the end. Um, but yeah. Um, and then shelves. I'm not quite sure what I'm gonna do with shelves. So I've got, these are from B&Q. So they're 80 centimeters wide so we're going to try and make it all fit about 240 centimeters so it all like is the same kind of width these are 80 centimeters each but because i've got five brackets now that i've got these i'm thinking uh i don't think that's enough brackets to be able to support all the shelves there's going to be one which is only sitting on one bracket so i quickly popped two these were only 10 pounds by the way they're meant to be the floating shelves but obviously i've already got brackets so i was just going to put them on top so they were 10 pounds each um for these so i got three of them so i quickly rushed to b and q to get another shelf-esque type thing so they didn't have the right kind of shelf that i wanted but i got this which is a bit of um furniture board so that measures 250 centimeters so that will fit like pretty much the whole wall flush um i'm worried it's gonna be too heavy we're gonna have to see i'm not a diy genius i'm just going with it so i may have to change my plan if it doesn't work and like my main worry is basically that the brackets won't take all of the weight so i have um first thing to do is basically check where all the studs in the walls are so that is not a supporting wall if you've got like an exterior brick wall then oh, life would be so much simpler but that's just like a plasterboard wall so I've had to find where all the wooden struts are in the wall so to do that I used this guy so I'll link this below as well. This is just a stud finder. I got it on Amazon. It was like £15. But essentially you just turn it on and run it across the wall and it beeps when it finds a stud. So you probably can't really see that. But I've marked out where I'm going to put my brackets. Um, so yeah. Drill the holes. Put the brackets in. Put the pole on. Put the shelf on. It should be really simple but I'm just so worried it's not going to be. And I feel like it's going to fall down. So I've marked up where all of the studs in the walls are. I'm just going to put up the first bracket. Um, so I'm going to use my spirit level to make sure it's even. Um, and yeah, just mark it up, drill the holes and put it on the wall. And then once the first bracket's up, I'm then going to use that one to make sure that the other ones that I do are going to be even as they go along. So first one's here. I think I probably want it about... No, that high? I need enough room underneath to, for obviously stuff to hang. So a little tip I have is when you know which drill bit you want to use and you've got your screws, measure how far you need to drill into the wall and then just put a little bit of masking tape around the drill bit and then when you're drilling you don't have to worry about um, wondering if you've like drilled the deep the hole deep enough or not so so yeah I've just put like literally a little bit of masking tape around there so I know that as soon as the drill's gone in that far that that's definitely going to be enough for the screw to go into the wall little disclaimer I am no DIY pro. When you, whenever you drill into a wall, make sure you're not drilling into any wires or pipes or anything like that. That's what's good about the um, stud finder that I got. It also tells you where electrical wires are and also where like any metal or pipes are. So always check. Um, yeah, I'm not a DIY pro. I can't even advise on a drill. I should actually got this drill as a hand me down from my mum. But yeah, always be super careful. And that's all I'm gonna say. 
Ah, uh, first one's up. You guys probably can't see it that well, it's a little bit too high. But yeah, first one is up. I just need to do the other four now. So it's finally up. I'm pretty chuffed with that. I think that's quite good. So I only put four of the brackets in. Basically, I had a real struggle with the studs in my walls. So apparently they're meant to be like every, I don't know, foot or something. Mine are not. So as you can see, I've got like one there, one there, one there. Then there was a random one there and then one there. So I thought, do I either put four up and have them look pretty even? or put another random one and have a bit more support. So I just put four up. I have the spare bracket if I do want to put it up at a later date, if I feel like it's not quite sturdy enough. Um, but yeah, I've just placed the shelf on top. On the brackets under here, there are actually holes so I can um, screw the shelf onto the actual bracket. But I just don't think I'll need to, like all the stuff I'm gonna put up there, is going to be um, like just bags and shoes, nothing too major, so I don't think it's going to go anywhere. Um, but yeah, I think I, I may get a different pole because basically, because this is extendable and I've had to extend the bot like that last bit out, you guys probably can't see, but like it's not touching the bracket. Um, yeah, there's also on the little hooks where you put the pole. There's holes on the back as well, so I can always um, put a little screw in there to keep the pole in place. So I might do that. I don't have any screws that are right at the moment, but yeah, I'm just gonna put a few things on there for now, just see how it looks, and I'll show you guys. So I just started putting a few bits on there, and I am so, so proud of myself. I'll show you guys from this angle. So this isn't all of my clothes, but I've started to kind of like colour code a little bit. And actually that's what's nice about having these little brackets is it's kind of like in different sections. So I thought that was quite nice and like annoyingly that bag is too, still too big to sit on top of there. But I'm gonna get a few little accessories and stuff to kind of go on top of there and pull out some of my really nice heels and stuff like that so it will look really nice. But I thought that was so cool. Yeah, I'm pretty chuffed with that. Yeah, so I'm gonna fill it up a bit more, but I'm super happy with that. And touch wood so far, the rail feels really, really sturdy. But yeah, just to give you guys a better look, that's what it's like. Obviously need to remove all of this stuff here. And then I have my nice mirror with my little rug to get ready and sit on. I was thinking of maybe getting a long sheepskin rug to run all the way along there, so that'd be quite cool, but Oh, this is like the wardrobe of my dreams. In reality, it's not gonna stay tidy like that. I've got so many more clothes to go on it. But yeah. Yeah, so I am pretty chuffed with that. So as I said before, the original wardrobe I wanted was a Pax open wardrobe, which basically had two hanging, hanging um, areas, two sets of drawers and then shelves in the middle. Um, I'll put a picture of it here to kind of show you guys what I was thinking of. But to put all that together was, everything would have come to, I think it was like 650 pounds, I think. So like by the time, it seems like it's gonna be cheap and then by the time you add everything, it all just adds up. And I was like, I do not wanna spend like half a grand at Ikea on one wardrobe. 
no. So um, I totaled up what I spent on everything. I'm obviously gonna link it below as well. So the six draw Malm drawers were 80 pounds. The three drawers were 40, so 120 for all the drawers. Um, the brackets were 545 each. So I used four in the end, plus like five pounds postage. Um, the shelf, the long shelf up there, was actually only um, £11.50. So I just got that from B&Q and it's not a shelf, it's a furniture furniture panel or furniture board. I'll, I'll try and find it online, I'll link it below. Um, and then the pole was only £6. So that particular pole from Ikea extends from, I think it's like 210 to 300 um, centimetres. So obviously this wall's 250-ish, so that's extended to 250. But obviously if you've got, they do smaller ones as well, so depending on the size of your wall or whatever, um, those poles are quite good because they're extendable. I'm not sure if I'm gonna swap it out for something else. I don't know, I'm just gonna see how I go with it. Um, but yeah, I totaled it all up. Bearing in mind the IKEA wardrobe that I originally wanted was about 650. So all in all, this cost me 165 pounds. So that is a massive saving. Like I just told Steve a second ago and he was like, thank you. <laughs> Cause nobody wants to pay more for something than they have to, right? And to be honest, like now that I, because I had to be creative with what I wanted, um, and be, be creative with how I was spending my money. Um, I actually prefer what I've got now to what I wanted originally. So for me, it's kind of worked out really well. So those of you who follow my channel will know that we have since moved home. Um, so obviously I don't have the open wardrobe anymore because that was in our old house. But one of the main questions was basically just like, was it strong enough? And yes, it 100% was. It lasted so well. I put so many clothes on there. I never had any issues. I honestly think it's an absolutely amazing project to try for yourself. I had a few messages about people not being able to access the brackets that I got. Um, you get them from America. I had them imported in from Amazon. So they kind of come and go, but it's worth kind of keeping an eye open to see if they come back on Amazon again. But I absolutely love the project. I loved it to begin with. It was definitely strong enough and it was definitely more than suitable for what I wanted to do. However, I did end up changing it. The reason being, if you're gonna do an open wardrobe, it has to look tidy all the time. And that is what I struggled with. I struggled kind of making it aesthetically pleasing all the time. And I kind of want it to just like dump stuff in there. Um, so I think the idea of it's really nice, but if you get a bit OCD like me, then it might bug you. So that is why I ended up changing it. The only other thing as well is the stuff did get like a little bit dusty. So obviously if you have a wardrobe with doors on it, stuff doesn't get dusty, it kind of protects it from that. Um, so that is just like another thing to kind of bear in mind. I know that won't bother absolutely everyone, but overall project was like a 10 out of 10. I thought it was really easy to do. Um, I did it before I even really started kind of delving heavily into any DIY stuff. So I think if I could do it, you guys definitely can as well. But yeah, good affordable option. And I think it looked really cute. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. If you do have any more questions about the project, then just leave them in the comment section down below and I'll get back to you. And don't forget to give this video a thumbs up because it really supports my channel. More importantly, don't forget to subscribe. I've got a couple more videos I wanna do similar to this one. So make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss out on any future kind of like DIY, Renault content, and I will catch you guys in the next one.